This presentation for the Olympic AIM training is on section 8.0 annual use, which is a suite of three methods, stubble height, soil alteration, and riparian woody use inside of the draft field protocol for Olympic riparian and wetland systems. You can follow along on page 124 in your manual. Annual use is neither core or contingent. The annual use methods fall into their own category to address use by grazing ung ungulates and humans in a given lentic area. Why do we collect annual use data? It helps us monitor livestock, wildlife, and human use at a site. We can determine whether current grazing criteria is, is meeting our criteria thresholds. It serves as an early warning indicator for management and condition. It informs permit renewals for grazing permits, and it helps us meet our legal compliance. Annual use includes three methods, stubble height, which is section 8.1, soil alteration, which is section 8.2, and riparian woody use, which is section 8.3. In order to conduct these methods, the following materials are required. First, you need the woody structure and annual use data sheet if the data are being collected on a full aim plot data collection effort or if the visit is for to collect only annual use data then you may use the annual use only data sheet you will need a graduated survey rod or height measuring stick with graduations in centimeters or meters such as an avalanche pole with clear markings you will need a MIM frame, which is 50 centimeters long by 42 centimeters wide, shown in the center of this slide uh, in black and white. You will also need three 30 meter measuring tapes in order to lay out and indicate the transects and chaining pins to secure the transects. The first method is called stubble height, section 8.1. If you have not established an anchored transect earlier in the sampling effort, then you will need to um, establish and anchor the transect. Data are collected at 1.5 meter intervals along the transects in quadrats, which are 50 meters by 42 centimeters, um, which are indicated using the MIM frame and the edge of the transect. So to collect stubble height, you lay the MIM frame along the transect with the points of the min frame lining up um, with zero and 50 meters, uh, 50 centimeters, excuse me, on the transect shown. Uh, the 50, meter, 50 centimeter increments are shown with orange dots in this diagram. The first step, once the min frame is laid down, is to locate the graminoid for measurement, which is a 7.5 centimeter tuft or three inch across tuft closest to the upper left corner of the rectangle formed by the MIM frame and the transect tape. If the project lead has specified key species to be measured for stubble height, then you may use your list of key species designated by the project lead. If key species are not designated, then, the, then you need to measure stubble height on graminoids only. Do not measure stubble height on forbs. The next step is to record the species of the tuft of graminoid that, that you have grabbed. If there are more than one species in the tuft, then record the dominant species. The second step is to mark whether that tuft is grazed, and that's a simple yes, no. Then you record the average leaf height of the graminoids in the tuft. You measure leaves only, do not measure culms or other parts. You stand the leaves up, and you measure from the ground to the average of the leaf ends, including both short and longer leaves, to obtain the measurement of average leaf height of your tuft. Shown on a paper data sheet, this is how you record the data. First, you write down the species. In this case, it's Elemis canadensis. Then you mark whether it, the tuft is grazed. In this case, yes. Then you mark the average leaf height of your tuft, in this case, 40 centimeters. In electronic data collection in the survey one, two, three application on a tablet, 
This is where you record stubble height and the woody structure and annual use form. You can see in the middle of the screen, first you record the dominant species, in this case, Elemis canadensis. Then you record the average um, leaf height, the stubble height of the leaves, and you mark whether it is grazed, yes or no. Make sure you're following the checklist at the end of the section on page 130. Review this checklist each time you measure stubble height and make sure you are um, meeting all of these uh, criteria for collecting quality data. The second method in the annual use section is called soil alteration, section 8.2. The first uh, step is to establish and anchor the transects if they have not been established earlier in the collection effort. Then the next step is to collect data at 1.5 meter intervals along the transects in quadrats um, that are designated by your MIM frame. So again, the same um, the same area that has been designated by the stubble height. So you can leave the MIM frame where it is. The MIM, again, the MIM frame is 50 centimeters along the transect and 42 centimeters wide. For soil alteration, you imagine five lines across your MIM frame quadrat. So each end of the MIM frame is one line each, and then there are three evenly spaced lines throughout the quadrat spaced 12.5 centimeters apart shown here in red dashed lines. The next step is to count soil alteration within the quadrat. Soil alteration is any kind of soil disturbance that has occurred during the current year. Uh, and examples of soil alteration are hoof prints, human footprints, tire tracks, and any kind of recent soil disturbance where shearing and uh, soil disturbance has occurred. You count the number of the lines that intersect any kind of soil alteration and record the number of lines that have in intersected soil alteration. So your, your count can be anything from zero to five. And the way you record this on the paper data sheet is by recording the number of lines that intersect soil alteration um, in your quadrat. In this case, the number was two. You record it in the rightmost column under soil alteration. In our electronic data collection, uh, it's Survey123 app. It's You can see it's towards the bottom of the screen here, and you mark the button that corresponds to the number of lines that intersect soil alteration. Again, we have our quality assurance checklist at the end of the methods. For soil alteration, look on page 134. Make sure you're reviewing this checklist while you're collecting data and at the end of each um, data collection effort in order to ensure quality data. The third and final annual use method is riparian woody use, which is section 8.3. These methods have been recently updated, so make sure you are referring to a draft of the manual after May 2021 or a supplement from your project lead to have the most current method for riparian woody use. Riparian use are also collected along the transect. Uh, if you have not already, make sure you, that you establish and anchor the transects. The first step for measuring riparian woody use is to locate the two meter by half meter quadrat, which is the same quadrat where we measure woody species age, height, um, age and height classes or woody structure in the core methods for lentic aim. So the quadrat is one meter on either side of the transect, two meters wide and 50 centimeters along the transect shown here by the green shaded rectangle. Inside each quadrat, identify all riparian woody individuals. So these are any species that are FAC, FAC wet, or obligate wetland species. Or if your project lead has identified key riparian species, then follow your riparian, key riparian species list. I identify all the individuals you're going to measure, which are either rooted in or overhanging the two meter by half meter quadrat. So in the case of the example I've illustrated here, we have a Ribes aureum at the top of the quadrat, a dead tamarisk, Ramosa sima, um, as we're moving down. Then we have two Salix goodingae, and then we have one Populus fermentii, which is uh, indicated by the star here, is rooted outside the plot. 
but overhanging the quadrat. And so we will measure riparian woody use on anything that's rooted in or overhanging the quadrat. The next step is for each individual determine this year's available growth. Available are any branches that are below two, meter, two meters, which is the threshold for being available to grazing animals. For example, cattle, horse and burrow, or native ungulates. Unavailable are any branches that are above the two meter grazing threshold. To illustrate that point here, I have a photograph of an individual standing next to a browsed willow. And you can see she's holding a 1.5 meter depth rod for scale. I'm going to illustrate how to estimate riparian woody use. So we can imagine our transect line, which is a yellow tape going through um, the individual here. To measure riparian woody use, we use our two meter quadrat, which is one meter on either side of the transect. And then we uh, measure two meters high in order to estimate the branches that are available. So you can see here the branches that are available are below that tw two meter threshold. And so for this given individual willow species, we estimate the percentage of those available branches which have been browsed. Here's another example where I'm going to illustrate laying out the transect shown here with a yellow line. So if the transect is going through these two willow individuals, then our quadrat goes one meter on either side of the transect. And we um, measure two meters to, the, to indicate which branches are available for grazing or browsing. Then we identify each individual inside of our quadrat and we estimate the percentage of those individual branches that are available and that have been browsed. So in the case of the individual on the right, uh, we can see that the growth for this year has filling out, really filling out its potential. I've outlined um, the potential for this individual in green on the right and its leaves and branches are, are filling out the potential. In the case of the individual on the left, its potential um, outlined in green here, you can see that it has been browsed or grazed um, quite heavily. Many of its leaves are missing, its branches have been stripped of their leaves, and so um, it would fall into a heavier grazing category to indicate that it has been grazed heavily. For available branches, of an individual inside of your quadrat and lower than the two meter available threshold, determine the woody species use class for that individual. See table 15 in the methods to uh, understand how use classes are defined and record the midpoint of the use class for each individual. If you turn to table 15, you'll see that we have five use classes and the unavailable designation. So unavailable means that all branches of that individual are over two meters and you would record NA. For any branches that are less than two meters and available for browsing, you would indicate what browsing category, uh, what use class those branches fall into for each individual. So you can see we have slight, light, moderate, heavy, and severe. For each of these categories, you would record the midpoint of that category for each individual. What this looks like on a paper data sheet, here's the example that I showed with our six individuals um, in the example from earlier. We have our Ribes aureum, the first individual that we recorded. And so for that, for the Ribes, we would record a use class of 10. We see that there's just a slight amount of browse on that Ribes and we record in the right hand column a 10. Next, we have a dead tamarisk. Uh, we don't record use classes for dead individuals, so we skip that. Next, we have a Salix goodingae, and uh, of the available branches, 50% of them have been browsed, so we record a 50 category. Then for the last two individuals, the Populus fremontii and the other Salix goodingae, these are both too tall and all their branches are unavailable, so we don't record use for those individuals because their branches are all above two meters. 
In our electronic data collection application, survey one, two, three, we note the use class for each individual in the center of the screen. You can see the buttons for each use class category or NA for unavailable. Again, we have a checklist to ensure data quality. Please review this quality assurance checklist at the end of the methods each time you collect data to ensure that data are meeting quality standards. Woody structure, section 6.4, in annual use, section 8.4 in the methods, can be recorded together in a single pass of the transect. So if you are doing a visit of an AIM plot and collecting all AIM methods at the same visit, you would lay out your transects um, and you would do a first pass of the transects and collect your LPI and heights data along the first pass. And then in the second pass of the transect, you would collect the core methods for Woody structure and annual use together. I will illustrate here how, what that looks like. You'd start at the zero end of the transect here, shown in a red dot. First, you would lay out your MIM frame and collect stubble height in the upper left corner of a tuft grab, measure stubble height on the graminoid species. After you measure stubble height, you would imagine your five lines for soil alteration and record soil alteration. Next, you would identify all woody species rooted in and overhanging the the two meter by 50 centimeter quadrat, and you would record woody species age, height, and use classes on each individual. Then you would move to the next increment, so 1.5 meters down the transect. You would again lay out your MIM frame and record stubble height in the tuft grab in the upper, upper left corner. You would imagine your five lines and record soil alteration. And then you would record all the information for woody structure and riparian woody use on any individuals rooted in or overhanging the quadrat. This concludes the presentation for Lentic AIM training on Section 8 Annual Use, Stubble Height, Soil Alteration, and Riparian Woody Use.